Are you thinking of buying a split keyboard? Have you been looking at the Moonlander and the Ergodox, but found it difficult to see a comparison between the two? Well, this is a first on YouTube and probably a first for you. I'll be comparing the Moonlander against the Ergodox right here so that you don't have to go anywhere else. This is your one-stop shop to find out everything there is about the two keyboards so that you can make the right decision. Let's get into it. Both of these keyboards cost roughly $350. Now, that figure changes from country to country because here for me in the UK, I have to pay custom charges on top of that as this keyboard comes from Taiwan. So for me, that was £50 on top of already paying $350. So the keyboard for me came to £350. So that's something that you should be aware of if you're living in a country where you're going to have to pay custom charges for deliveries from Taiwan. So there's that. But they both cost £350 for me. And that's how much it'll cost you. So the, the price isn't really a big differentiator. And the same applies actually for the customization options. You can get a black or a white keyboard. That's it. And you have multiple options around the switches as well. For me, both of these have the Kyle, Kyle, Kyle Brown switches, um, and mainly because of the, the force that's required on them. They're not too light like the red ones, just a little bit heavier, but nowhere near as heavy as some of the other ones available. So we wanted something which had a little bit of heft to it, but not so much that our fingers started hurting after doing that. So there's the customization options. Now, Shipping is where there is a slight difference between the two. Because the Moonlander is slightly newer, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer to get it in your hands, right? The wait times for the Moonlander are around five weeks, I would say. Now, I have seen stories where someone ordered it today and has, you know, shipped it out the next day. So I think they are starting to batch some of these together, but don't go on my words or Reddit's words. They still say that the lead time is around five weeks for the Moonlander and a couple of weeks for the Ergodox. So keep those in mind. If you need a keyboard sooner, then you know which one's for you. But I think you still have to be pretty patient because they both take a, quite a long time. This brings us to one of the biggest differentiators between these two products, the size. The Moonlander is smaller in every dimension versus the Ergodox. If you're looking for something that's just smaller in profile in every way, then Moonlander is the keyboard you should go for. I'm not saying that the Ergodox is massive, but it is in comparison to the Moonlander, right? You can see when they're stacked on top of each other, they're side by side. There's, there's quite a big difference. Like there's a little bit more of a heft to the Ergodox. It's just built like a tank. You know, the plastic shell is just bigger and heftier versus the slimmer profile that the Moonlander has. But that's something to consider. If you're, if you're looking for something that's slimmer, more portable, because yes, Moonlander is supposed to be portable, uh, then that one has the edge over the Ergodox. But if you, like me, are in a pandemic, and can't move from desk to wherever else you're going. I mean, these split keyboards are gonna be in one place for the remaining of their lifetime. So yes, there's a difference, but is it big enough to go for the slimmer one over the bigger one? 
Not if it's going to stay in the same place, really. So that's the size. This brings us to the build quality. Now, they're both built out of plastic, but as you well know, I've already said that the Ergodox is built like a tank. It's one solid slab of plastic, and there isn't much give in any way. You can see I'm trying to move it and twist it, and mm -mm, there's no give. And actually, the same applies to the Moonlander, right? Even though the profile is slimmer, it's not a, you know, less well-built profile. It's still pretty good. I'm still trying to, as you can see, trying to bend it, and there isn't much give. So that's good. But the one thing that the Ergodox has over the Moonlander is that it has less breakpoints. The Moonlander has the thumb cluster, which is another pivot point. And, and that is another failure point. And actually for me, that has broken already. Yup, my Moonlander is broken after less than a month of me having it. <laughs> Not to say that the Moonlander has bad build quality. I think it's really good. I think I've just got a defective unit. The screw has jammed. I can't twist it. You can hear the noise, it just doesn't do anything. Now, fortunately, the customer service is good, as you would expect with a product that costs £350, right? To be good, they, re they are responsive. But just because it's broken, don't expect them to ship out another unit to you the next day. Um, I'm having to wait a couple of weeks to receive another left half of the keyboard. It's a little disappointed because when I pay that much money, I expect for the replacement part to get to me quicker. But I mean, I've waited four weeks for the whole keyboard to arrive, so there's that. So keep that in mind. If you do break anything, they have great customer service for both of these keyboards, but there is a lengthy delay for you to receive that part to start using the keyboard. Now, fortunately, I've broken it in a way where I can still utilize the keyboard, just not in the way that I would. And yeah, there's something to keep in mind. I was undoing the screw for this particular video and it broke. That's my luck. But that is build quality. Great with an asterisk. Setting up both of these keyboards is super simple. Connect them up to your laptop or your PC and you're done. You're ready to go. Start typing as quickly as you can on a split keyboard. That, that's it, right? The only difference, and actually quite a big one, is that the Moonlander has a USB-C connector versus the USB-B connector, or the micro, sorry, the micro USB connector on the Ergodox. And the only reason that is is because it's an older model, right? The Moonlander's newer, you get a USB-C, which is great for me. I think it's a big plus because it means I can connect it straight to my MacBook, Bam, connected, all done. Yes, it does come with a, an adapter if you don't have a USB-C port on your machine, which is great. They've thought about that. But that is, I think, the key difference, right? The connection between the computer and the keyboard itself. But that's it. Set up, simple, connect, start typing, boom. So how do they sound? Do they sound any different? Well... Why don't we hear it? What do you think of the sound? Do you think one is louder than the other? Remember that they both have the same switches in them, so it isn't like one's got a click here versus a linear switch. They both have the same switches in them, so they should sound reasonably similar, do they? Well, I think the Moonlander is slightly quieter, but not so quiet that I would recommend that over the Ergodox if you're looking for a quiet keyboard. I think they both have a slight sound profile. One is just a few decibels higher versus the Moonlander. So that's something you should keep in mind if you're looking for a keyboard which has got a low travel, low sound travel, and if you need that, if you're in an office, Hopefully one day you're back in the office once the pandemic is over. 
And at that point, you should probably go for the moon lander if that's the case. This brings me to the software. Both of these keyboards have identical software and it's customizable to the nth degree. And I mean, you can customize it to your liking. I have a Final Cut Pro layer, a coding layer, a mouse layer, you name it, I have it. And you can do that with both of them. ZSA have done a great job in not being like Apple and only having to buy a new device to get the latest features. They've released a new feature called Tap Dance, which actually came out in January of 2021. And they released it on both of these keyboards. You know, that's great. And that's, I love that, that you could buy a keyboard that's quite a bit older and still have all the features that the new one has. So if, if one of the reasons for you to get a newer one over the older one is software, then don't worry because you can get it all on both of them. And I'm not going to go into any more detail because I think the software for both of these keyboards deserves its own video and for you to watch that video. So I'll stop there. If your warrior software, don't let it be. Finally is the ergonomics, right? How different are these keyboards? First of all, they're both ergonomic keyboards, right? They're both better than using your keyboard that's attached to your laptop or the shitty Mac keyboards that they sell for a hundred pounds. That's, that's a fact. You buy either of these, you're going to be better off. Now let's talk about the differences, right? Does the smaller size mean that it's, you know, better for smaller hands? No, actually. I think they're both similar. The profiles, sure, are different. But if you're looking at the main 36 keys, the QWERTY keys are all accessible the same way on both of these keyboards. They both have an orthogonal layout which means up and down movements are very easy and straightforward. The one thing I would note is that the, the keys on the outside of both of these keyboards, well, it's slightly easier for me to reach the keys on the outside on the moon lander versus on the Ergodox, mainly because the size of the key on Ergodox is bigger so that the actual click point is further out. So if you have a tiny pinky, that's something you should consider and something you should know. Now, when we get to the ability to tent these keyboards, another one for me that Ergodox is slightly better at because you get three tenting points, you get three pivot points, which means you can go any which way you want with the Ergodox, right? You can tilt it this way, that way, up, down, whichever angle you want it, you can achieve it. The Moonlander, on the other hand, has one tent on each of the, the keyboards, right? So you have one on the inside, you have the ability to add another one, attach it on the outside. They don't give it to you, so you'd probably have to purchase it. And then the other pivot point is the thumb cluster itself. So there is slightly less customization in terms of the options of which angle you want your keyboard. Now, usually most people have it this way, and that is achievable by both of these keyboards. It's just something to keep in note that if you want slightly more raised or, you know, inverse angle, then you're probably likely to achieve that better with the Ergodox than the Moonlander. Something else that's worth noting is that the rest pad, the wrist rest pad, is made out of rubber with the Ergodox versus plastic on the Moonlander. Does that make a difference? Eh, the only difference for me is that the, the rubber just gathers a lot more dust than the plastic, and it's harder to clean. But apart from that, they're both wrist rest and they both work great. And that's about it. I think they're both, like I said, very customizable and very adjustable to your needs. What do your hands need? Because these keyboards will provide it to you. Both of these keyboards are great, and I'm fortunate to live in a house where there are two people who code and that is why I'm able to give you these comparisons between these two keyboards. How many differences are there? A few. The price is the same. The size is different. The build quality is the same. The ergonomics is slightly different. But both of these keyboards will make your life better because you're not going to be typing like this anymore. Shoulders back, relax, have the keyboard wherever you like. Some people have it here. 
Some people have it this way. And in other videos you've probably seen, people have it like this. You know, they give you so much more flexibility to type the way you want to type. Now, they don't guarantee you type quicker because it's going to take longer for you to learn how to type. Split. But that's it. That is all I have time for. I think this is a long one. If you have any questions about these two keyboards, then let me know because I want to help you find the right keyboard. Which one do you want to go for? Well, first of all, have the money for it and then leave a comment down below. And in return, all I ask for is a subscription to this channel. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.